We waited all this time for that. What's up YouTube, Dow here from Zephyr War Games, and of course, finally, today the ban list dropped. Some of you are a little bit unenthusiastic about it, some of them have lost their mind, but there is one glaring omission from the current list. Now, unlike all of the normal ban list videos, I'm actually going to take you through the list, but in more detail, I'll talk about what it means for the format, and then we'll have a look at the market. We'll have a look at an instant change of what's happened with some of the prices because I've seen some of the cards just rocket in value and of course some of them will plummet. So let's start with the ban. It's cute, short, sweet, simple uh, and to the point. So now officially banned from the 3rd of October is Fairytale Snow. No surprise there. Ronin Toadin. No surprise there really. Christian Halley Firebrax. Long overdue. Chaos Ruler. The Chaotic Magical Dragon. A little bit overdue, like a card that lets you mill five and then add a light or dark is still pretty busted. The only deck that it hurt of mine was pretty much punks, but more so the Synchron deck, but I'm pretty sure there's ways to live around that. And then finally, Red Reboot. So I was kind of like, mm, I understand it. Like, if you draw that one Saki Red Reboot and shut down your opponent's entire controls, but then it's pretty much the same as opening up Feather Duster, but you can't stop it with a Judgment. Uh, then we move on to the limited cards, the cards you can now play at 1, and these are very interesting. So Blackwing, Steam, The Cloak, and of course Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line, so basically get rid of Halley Fire Racks, it's Unleash the Tuna time. Uh, they're actually really, really good, so more so the Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line could be quite useful in a Synchron deck. I still haven't really had a chance to dive into the decks and how I'm going to update them, but it'd be cool to see. Cyberjar has come back to one. I mean, they've pretty much done it with all the other jars apart from Fiberjar, so this isn't a big surprise. Substichode, so they thought that they could Substichode Ronin Toad in with Substichode. Hmm, not sure if that works out or not. Still kind of cool to have that back though. Then we've got Spellbooker Judgment. Oh, finally, we get the card that Spellbooks have been missing. Now, I'm not saying Spellbooks are now going to become meta. But Judgment was an incredibly powerful card that the deck has been missing. And you'll see the effects of that one card coming back has on the cards of the rest of the spellbooks. A point of the Red Lotus. Uh, interesting card. Like, it makes sense. It's not a card that I'm completely shocked by, like, part of the Zyres, But it's kind of a card that I was like, mm, okay, I can kind of see why. But did it have to be? Mm, you never know. And then we go back to Unlimited. There are no changes to the semi-limited section, but Unlimited. We can now play Dynamite Knight, the true Draco Fighter, at free, but no Masterpiece. Cyber Angel Ben 10, at free, but no Eva. Shooting Riser Dragon, at free, but no Honey Firebrax. Fusion Destiny, at free, yes for the hero deck. Quite funny without Verte, so... <laughs> And then, of course, we've got the Deer Servant at free. Hallelujah. Heck yeah for Dark Magician decks. Um, Trickstar Light Stage at free. Interesting. I mean, in the past, you'd probably worry that a Trickstar Light Stage was like a one-card combo to a Verte. Now that's not the case. But Light Stage is still quite good against uh, back row decks because you activate that. It kind of forces them to stop it. Otherwise, it's just going to go, I'm going to lock that particular card. And the last one, Wall of Revealing Light. Like, okay, a little bit of a dated card. Probably right that it comes back to free. Okay, so let's have a look on the format. Sprites. What's happened to Sprites? Well, they've lost Ronin Toad in. It is a heck of a lot harder to make Totally Awesome, but they can still do it. Technically, you either open up Swap Frog or you special Swap Frog off of Gigantic, and then you need to be able to make Elf in order to bring it back. So it does mean that the deck requires one additional extender in comparison to what they did have previously. So it's not completely dead in the water, but it is something that is still playable. Uh, the loss of Fairy Tale Snow is probably the only hit towards tier elements, so that is the biggest shock to me. Is that I told you it was going to be a little bit difficult to actually hit tier elements completely. Um, I suppose you could argue that the Chaos Ruler was a hit to tier elements as well because it does mill five. Um, but I do feel that tier elements is now the number one deck, uh, and that's before we've got the new waves of support, which this is probably going to be in effect weighing them to the new year. So I wouldn't expect a new ban list till January, February, maybe just before the new Photon uh, core set comes out. 
Uh, Red Reboot is more of a side deck card than a main core card, but it does mean that control decks can run a little bit more rampant, meaning that your Dusters, Twin Twisters, Cosmics, and everything like that is going to be a lot more useful. Um, moving on to the semi limits, I don't think this really does a huge amount. Yes, it's cool to get Cloak back. Yes, it's cool to get Beast uh, O-Line back, Judgment back, Slough to Toad back, and Cyber Dragon uh, Cyber Jar back. But I don't think it really changes the format. They're not really going to make a huge difference. The other limits, Dynamite Knight, it's nice to have back. Ben 10, it's nice to have back for Drytrons. Riser, doesn't make a big difference. Um, Fusion Destiny, Nadir Servant, Light Stage. I'd probably say Light Stage is probably the most impactful card to have back at free. But even then, it's not like meta-defining. Like, I can't see any of these changes making a difference to the current format. Like I can't see them making tiers any stronger. Um, I just feel that they are out and out right, just the more stable deck now going forward. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see where the format changes. So that's how it affects the format, that is the ban list. I'm now gonna dive quite into eBay and we're gonna have a look at what the price changes have been for these cards as they have adapted. Okay, so we're gonna we're not really gonna look into the banned cards because they're only really gonna go down. We're just gonna have a look at the cards that have come back to free or limited or changed. Uh, we're gonna start straight off with Fusion Destiny. Um, this one probably was the biggest jump that I saw. So you can see now, first edition Super Rares went from like a couple of pound here and there to like someone's trying to sell one copy for thirty five quid. You're out of your mind. Um, Ultra Rare fifteen pound on bids. Ultimate Rares went from £25 to £120. What is going on here? I mean, you could pick up a nice little Super Rare Prismatic Art for £2.50. Um, bids of £8 on an Ultra Rare, £50 for a play set of Ultra Rares, £20 for an Ultra Rare, £15 for a single Super Rare, and then just a random Dark Magician Girl right here. 60 quid for a play set of Ultras is absolutely crazy. Uh, let's look at Secret Rare Cyber Angel Benton. Now, we're only really going to be looking at these um, for the pure fact that, I mean, they've already got a lost start. So, I mean, yeah, look, pound on that, four pound on a lost start, um, ten pound on a lost start there, four pound on a super rare, um, ultra rares, secret rare, there you go, thirteen pound fifty. Um, so, not a massive jump on those. Uh, let's have a look at the deer servant. I reckon that's another one that would have gone up. Uh, deer servant. So, obviously, only two prints, Ultra Rare and Secret Rare. So, the Ultras at a £10, pretty much standard of what I'd expect it to be. Um, let's see if there's any Secret Rares or if they've all been bought out. There you go. £30 on a Secret Rare. Um, so, I'm not really massively surprised on that. £27 there. Again, looking at about £30. Uh, I can't imagine Trickstar Light Stage will be massively high, but we'll have a look. Trickstar Light Stage. And then we'll check out all of the fun ones. So, Light Stage. Whoa, there you go. Ultra Rare, £15. The cat is clearly not impressed with the uh, price of that one. £5 on a common. And then it looks like the rest have been bought out. We've only got Korean ones and uh, OCG ones left on that. Um, let's look at where, where the fun starts to become in. So, let's look at the limited stuff. So, this is always going to be interesting because these are all cards that have come back off the list. Um, and people usually get rid of them. So, so let's start off with Steam the Cloak. Um, four pound, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, obviously you can get one from Australia. Um, but you're going to have to pay a heck of a lot in postage. Oh, there you go. Pound for a common on that one. That's kind of cool. Let's look at Cyberjar. Now Cyberjar obviously has an ultimate rare as well. So I can imagine that one's kind of gone through the roof. Um... Eight ninety nine on a rare, eight pound on a rare, um, mosaic rare, thirty pound there on that one, seventy five pound on a pretty damaged but first ed ultimate rare. There you go. So that's the prizes you're looking at. Uh, let's have a look at Mecha Phantom Beast O line. I mean, I highly expect most of these to be. Uh, I haven't even typed that in properly. Uh, but yeah, I kind of expect most of these to um, to already be pre like pretty recent searches. Four pound on an ultra rare, that's not bad. Three pound for an ultra rare, so they're not going too crazy. Uh, let's have a look at Substitute, and then we'll look at the big one. 
<laughs> Substitute my wife? What? Uh, 30 pound! 30 pound for a rare! What is going on? Okay, that's the mad one. Now the big one. Spell book of judgment. Now I don't expect, like, I expect judgment to be quite high, but I expect everything else is going to be mad. So look, 18 pound on a secret rare, Megatin 14 reprint, 17 pound, 18 pound, 16 pound, 30 pound for an original, um, original print, 20 pound for an original print, 55 pound for a playset. Woof! Looking at the big, big money. Um, the other card you're probably going to want to be looking at the back of this is just general spell book. Um, so like all of the high rarities, this will probably give me like, yeah, the Wii. Um, all of the high rarity cards, so all of the ultimate rares and everything like that is where the money is going to come in. So 30 quid for a ultimate uh, Magician of Prophecy. Uh, £50 for a little mini set like that. There you go. £60 a copy for two spell books of Fate, Ultimate Rares, Unlimited Editions. Um, so yeah, you can already see that they're going to have a big effect. Anyway, uh, that was it. Ban list, format changes, and a market watch all rolled into one big happy video for you guys. If you have any questions at all, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer them. But for now, as absolutely always, guys, stay safe. And of course... Happy Dolan.